Hey guys, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Sorry for the late. I know I've not really been active, but I thought this would be a good time to like make a video. I will make lots of videos actually because it's no time, no time, and there's no better time like the present to make all the videos I need to make. And once again, I apologize for now checking up. I promise to check up on everybody on the group before the ending of. Uh, for the ending of the year, it might be far fetched, but I would try my best. Um, so, so this topic would be on functions, right? I'll be teaching you functions. What are functions in JavaScript? How to use functions? How to create functions? What you can do with functions and stuff like that. Let's jump right into it. Um, functions, 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 functions. Functions are basically blocks of reusable code that can be used in used over and over in your application. So imagine you wrote a logic for to add some numbers and you're adding some numbers a lot. And instead of just copy and paste this logic over and over again, you can easily just create a function and put the logic inside it. And instead of now copying and pasting this, um, instead of copy and pasting this addition function multiple times, you can just copy and paste this function in multiple places. Benefits, if you want to change stuff, you can just go to the function and change only that function. And it reflects across everywhere. And uh, other benefits, well, it makes your code cleaner as by it reduces the lines. You don't want to be seeing 1,000, 10,000 lines of code. Yeah. And this also makes it more readable. It has a lot of benefit. And basically, almost every programming language has functions because it's such an awesome thing. So, firstly, let's go into declaring functions. There are multiple ways of creating a function. And I would go with um, the most popular to the ES6 format to the least popular and stuff like that. So, the most popular way of creating a function would be functions. Function keyword, the name of the function, let's say my name, right? My name, my, oh, let me rename this properly. My name, which is literally, okay, sorry, let me collect this. And I'll just put the console.log here. Dot log. Let me expand this string. My name is so now I've created a function. What this function does is literally just say my name is. That's all it does. But you're wondering why is nothing happening. I'm not seeing anything in the console. I, I'm very sure that's a console.log bringing me to another aspect of function after you create a function you must always call the function like a function is not complete it's not being called anywhere because basically it's not doing anything right so let's go to you call the function by invoking it it's the name you give to it uh, sounds like some anime stuff <laughs> my name and open the brackets then this should run and you should get my name is in the console so any moment now any moment yep we have my name is number one way of calling a function let's look at number two comment this out um we'll use the we've already treated variables like declaring variables and assigning them so it's very similar in this place let's um my age my age be equal to right in function now when you write function here you do not need to give it a name because you have already named it i just open this bracket and do this Doopsie do doopsie do copy this paste it here and put my age, right? And I invoke this and see what happens. My age, this should give you my age is, okay? So this is another method of calling a function. You can get very antsy with this. 
because it's literally a variable, but you are assigning this variable to a function. You can see the two differences here. This collects function, then open bracket, then close, but it does not take any name because you are assigning it. But if you had called this without any name, which I would most likely have given you an error. I'm not so sure about that. Let's test it out. So let's say root function. I didn't give it a name. I just wrote function and console. So the log hello. Let's see what happens. That's the error you get. Function statement requires a function name. So you can't really write like a function without assigning the name. On this, let's see. This work. Uh oh, it did. Okay. Uh, forgotten the name of this. It's a method in JavaScript in which you you want the function to be called immediately, right? So you wrap it within a bracket. So it's self-calling. It calls itself. I've forgotten the name. You can easily check this up online. So you put curly bracket in the front and the back. And because of time, I could have easily checked it up and told you guys. We'll most likely send you the name on the group chats. Then the third and probably the final method for this tutorial would be the arrow functions, which was introduced in year six for certain reasons when it comes to copying and the disk keyword and various other stuff. So, but we, we would not be going into this beyond the scope for this is beginner's class, if I remember properly. My age, my school, let's use my school. Um, writing arrow function is similar to the last one, but now instead of writing function, we use this arrow. Now I copy this and paste. I put my school. I call it. My school. That's that that should work. My school is should be printed on console. Alright. Um so these are three ways of creating functions. They all have their differences, like this now. This would be hosted. So I can call, I can use this function. I can write my name here. And this would work. I'll get my name it's in the console. Right? But if I said I should do something with my age, Janeiro. It's all about wasting the my name exactly. Um my name is listed above. So when the function is called, the interpreter has already like processed the function. But when it comes to my age, because we are using the let keyword, they are not listed above. So you cannot call my age before the interpreter gets to it and just reads from top to bottom. Right? So when it's written my age, it has not processed my age function is got to. So it shows an error because it does not know what my age is, which is different. This is like the very so common cases of like the two different functions. Although the second approach is more advisable. But in most tutorials, you see them using the first approach. Second approach would create like less bugs and more readable and stuff. But first approach is just so quick and easy that most people would you just use that instead? But you can use the two. Arrow function is scoping. In this keyword is global. An arrow function is like normally functions are block scoped, meaning if you declare something inside them, you really can't use them outside the function unless you are returning them. But you can um, do this. Same, the same is not true for arrow functions. Basically, they have other, other benefits that are there. That are, well, you can message me if you want to learn more. You can just Google up stuff on arrow functions. So those are like the three basic ways of creating functions. Once again, if you want to create any function, at least before the arrow function, let me delete this arrow function for now because we'll really not be using it. Um, three ways of creating a function. First, the function keywords. I say three ways, like 
three things to note when creating a function. The function keyword, you see function, function, the function name, because it has to be called, so it needs a name. So you see, this is the name, this is the name. Then the function body, yep, it needs to have, it has to do something. If not, we can't really classify it as a function. Then after that, we have to actually call the function to make it a function. We have to call it somewhere. And one fun thing about function is functions can call other functions, which just makes it great. Um, I can put my age here. Okay. Let me put my name. All right. Okay. And I would console log. I would on um. I would uncomment my age, but you would see this, my name being printed. You see both of them being printed out basically. You see, it comes reads this code. My age is printed out. Comes to my name. Goes goes on and find where it's been called. Then where it was created. Then calls the function within it. Right. So that's all about like creating functions. Let me comment this out. The next is function arguments. Functions do get better. Yes, you might be thinking, how did, can this function get better? How do they get better? Well, they, have, they do get better. Um, functions can take in arguments. They can take in countless arguments. Most of the time, they take one or two or three, three maximum is advisable, but really, really, there's really nothing stopping you from like packing a lot of arguments. But do not try that. Just stick with your one, two, three. Um, so my name is probably if this function was to print a person's name, it would pretty be useless if we just add like a static name here, like Tony uh, Chromit. Okay. So if the only thing this function did was my my name is Chrome, it's, it's not really reusable and it's not really flexible. And that's where parameters comes in. Function parameters or arguments. They are they really both mean the same thing. So a function can take in a value. This value keyword really does not really matter. I can name it whatever I want. I can name it V, I can name it VD. I can name it whatever, but I'll just put the value. And now I can use this value within the block. Um, okay, here we have that. So let's do, we get my name is undefined because this my name is not really passing, like there's no value passed within it when it's being called. So now I can reuse this and pass basically John. You know, that's the beauty of functions. Now you can see my name is John, my name is Miriam, my name is Ben 10. From this, you see how reusable this is. Instead of putting console.log, my name is several here. Yeah? In several places here, yeah? we just write my name function, invoke the my name function and pass in the name we want. Save space, save time, saves a lot of things. And probably because I want to do something more with this my name function. Can always just call me and do something more with it. Um, let's see. Oh, and this syntax I'm using, these are templated strings. I just remembered. They allow you to capture values. They allow you to wrap strings and um, non-strings together, basically. The output will always be a string. 
and they come very handy. It's just the template string, like back ticks, they're on your keyboard. Most likely at the left top corner, then dollar sign and the quality brackets. Then I can put So let's do this. Probably I don't want to print my name is again. I can easily just edit that. And it will reflect everywhere. Hooray. Everybody's happy. John is my name. Miriam is my name. Benton is my name. Then let's okay. You can easily see how you can easily make a simple calculator this function <sighs> right a comma b Addition of me giving values are so I call this calculator function when it's has been declared, and normally we should pass in a value. But since this no value was provided, it's the addition of the given values are any, not a number. We can write some statements here to check if a value is given, if a is equal to zero, or if a is only provided. We can write various conditional statements. Do a lot of things within a function. Combining the conditional statements we learned last time with functions really makes you like you can really create a lot of math stuff. You can just start imagining the type of math stuff you can create with that. Then um, let's put two comma seven. See so what happens. We should add addition of the given values are nine. So seven plus three is nine. But I also put twelve. Fourteen. But if I also put a a as a string, what would it give us? So give us to a which is a string and we might not want a string so you can check if a string has been provided using your if statements you can just play around with the code pen and see what you can do so basically you can pass in quite a lot of arguments you can use the arguments within the function you can use them to do a lot of quite a lot of interesting stuff but that basically is for parameters or arguments that you pass to functions um next is return statement so let's say i created a function nice nice and i do something like let's what I do something like a console dot log. A console dot log do what? Um, as I said before, you can easily a function can be assigned to a variable. Right? And you can use this. There are cases in which you would want to, you would want to, you want a function to do a type of calculation. Then you the calculation the function does. In this case, you need a return statement. If I was to console log this function now, 
I use something like console.log. I'm not invoking it. I'm just console logging the function. Let's see what it would give us. Prints out the function. Interesting. But if I should not invoke it, what does it give us when invoked? Undefined. Because it invokes the function, but itself is undefined. So let's say this has been nice, okay? Let me show you another good example. Let's let B is equal to my console log B. B would give us let me B would give us undefined. Probably won't get back that word be nice, right? And this was like a problem for me when I was learning functions, the return statement, because watching YouTube tutorials and a lot of stuff, this was very easy to like overlook all this type of things. A function can only be used as a I would like call it as a value if it has return statements. If you want to use a function as a value, like assign its other parameters and do a lot of complicated stuff with it, it needs to have a return statement. If you are doing something like um, Likud or um, Akarank, your functions, I remember when I was learning Akarank, like doing algorithms and I'll be like, this thing is not working. I'm very sure I wrote all the logic well. I'm very sure everything should be working. Then I'll go to my function and discover the process can does not even know what I'm writing because I'm not returning anything. If you're writing a function and you're not returning anything, whatever is being assigned to you to consider it as undefined. Like now, okay, let's get this to run. It should be undefined. B is undefined. And I want B to be the um this thing. To be the word. This word I created within the function. Let's be nice. Okay, that's like undefined. In order to do that, I have to return something from a function. Always remember return, use the return keyword. Return word. I'll stop getting undefined and I will not get the word I'm returning from the function. So let's say I was to do like complex calculation, I did addition pressure, and probably I want to assign this addition suppression to another value and do some other complicated stuff. Um I would have to return whatever calculations I've done within that function. If not, if I assign this to another value, it will not be able to be used. Like it should not recognize anything in that function. It will run it, but it should not be able to pass the value to something else or consider it as a variable, basically. So I think today we've gone through what are functions, how to create functions, how to pass in arguments and parameters to so functions, function return statements, and what are return statements in functions. They literally just return the value. They literally are the reasons why functions can be used as variables um, and some function practices and arrow functions and a little bit of everything. With that, I think that concludes the course on basically function. Moving into the next class, which would be arrays. Um, I'll just jump into array. Let me upload this.